This video is going to look at how to decompose rational functions into simpler rational functions that make them a little easier to integrate. Uh, let's start with the type that has distinct linear factors. Uh, let's begin with the fraction 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. In all of these different types and examples, we're going to factor the denominator as completely as possible. This quadratic denominator can be broken down into x minus 3 times x minus 2. Negative 3 minus 2 has a sum of negative 5 and a product of 6. Because these broke down from x squared to just x, they're considered linear. Because they are different, they're distinct linear factors. In order to decompose, we're going to create smaller fractions with each factor as a denominator. Since these factors are linear, we're going to use a constant for the numerators. The numerators will be one power lower than the denominators. Focusing on this part, if you multiply both sides by x minus 3 times x minus 2, you will get 1 equals a times x minus 2 plus b times x minus 3. Now, to solve for a and b, which will eventually be the numerators for the original problem's decomposition, we can randomly pick values of x. Let's be smart about it. If we wanted this factor to go away, we can let x be 2. And so let's just do that. 1 equals a times 2 minus 2 plus b times 2 minus 3. Replace the x's with 2. The a term will disappear because 2 minus 2 is 0 and we will get a negative 1b equals 1. Switch out the negative, multiply both sides by negative 1, you will get b equals negative 1. Now, to get the other factor to go to 0, we can let x be 3. If we let x be 3, we're going to get 1 equals a times 3 minus 2 plus b times 3 minus 3. This time the b term goes away and we're left with 1a equals 1. What that tells us is the original rational function 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 can be decomposed into 1 over x minus 3, because a is 1, minus 1 over x x minus 2 because b was negative 1. In an integral situation, maybe we were asked to integrate that original rational term. The integral of 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 dx can now be written as the integral of these two smaller fractions. The derivative of the denominator is 1, the derivative of this denominator is 1, so it makes it easy to find the antiderivative, natural log absolute value of your denominator, minus natural log of absolute value of this denominator, plus your constant of integration. Maybe you're having a rational function that has repeated linear factors. Now what that means is we're going to start like the first example and we're going to factor the denominator as completely as possible. I'm going to leave the numerator alone. Factoring the denominator, all three terms have an x in common. So if you factor out an x from all three terms, you have x squared plus 2x plus 1 left over. This is a quadratic factor, but you can also factor it as x plus 1 twice. x plus 1 times another x plus 1 will foil out to x squared plus 2x plus 1. That tells us that this fraction 
or rational function has the possibility of decomposing into a fraction with x as a denominator, x plus 1, and x plus 1 squared. Each of these denominator factors are linear because they're x to the first, so all of these numerators will be constant values. Again, those are one less than the denominator. With a repeated linear factor, you have to build the factors one at a time until you reach that exponent. For example, if this had been x plus 1 quantity cubed, you would have x plus 1, x plus 1 squared, and a plus d over x plus 1 quantity cubed. You keep building fractions, if they're repeated linear, from a power of 1 up to the power this is. Now since that's x plus 1 squared, we only had to build two of them. Multiply both sides by the least common denominator, x times x plus 1 quantity squared, and this will give you 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 equals the a fraction already has an x, but it is missing two of the x plus 1s. So that's a times x plus 1 quantity squared. The b fraction is missing a single x and another x plus 1. So we're going to have b times x times x plus 1. It already has one of them, so it doesn't need all two. It just needed one more. And the c fraction already has x plus 1 quantity squared, but it's missing a single x. This is the equation after multiplying all four of these fractions by x times x plus 1 quantity squared. Using technique like we did in the last example, I know that if I let x be 0, that this term and this term will go away because b times 0 times 1 is going to be 0, and c times 0 will also be 0. So if we plug 0 in, 5 times 0 squared plus 20 times 0 plus 6, that's where I get this 6, 0 plus 1 squared times a is a. So immediately we know that a is going to be 6, and that's going to be the numerator of that first fraction. I can get this factor and this factor to go to 0 if I choose x equals negative 1. So that's what I'm going to do here. 5 times negative 1 squared plus 20 times negative 1 plus 6. That totals negative 9. Negative 1 plus 1 squared is 0, so 6, because remember a is 6, 6 times 0 is 0. b times negative 1 times negative 1 plus 1, that all goes to 0 because of this factor. And then the only thing left is c times negative 1, so that tells us negative 9 is equal to negative c. Divide or multiply both sides by negative 1, and we get c equals 9. 9 is the numerator of the third fraction. All we have left to find is b, but we've exhausted our easy numbers. 0 and negative 1 are the easy ones because they cancel out a big block of your problem. We have three fractions, but we've only had two solutions to make the denominator 0. So this time we just got to randomly pick a number and using the fact that a is 6 and c is 9. I like to use small numbers to keep it simple, so I randomly picked a 1. You can pick any number you like, but I'm going to use a 1. Back up in this equation, 5 times 1 squared plus 20 times 1 plus 6, that totals 31. 6 times 1 plus 1 squared, that's 4 times 6 is 24. 
b times 1 times 1 plus 1, that's 2 times 1 times b, that's 2b. And then finally, c times 1 is c. Excuse me, 9 times 1 is 9. c is 9 times 1, I knew I said that wrong, is 9. So once you've plugged a 1 into all these x's, all these x's, and used 6 for a, 9 for c, we can solve for b. 24 plus 9 is 33. 31 minus 33 is negative 2 equals 2b. Divide by 2 and you get b equals negative 1. Now, the original rational function, the very top left one, can be written as 6 over x, because that was our a. b was negative 1, so that's negative 1 over x plus 1. And c was 9, 9 over x plus 1 quantity squared. Makes it much easier to find the antiderivatives because if we were asked to integrate that huge fraction, we can integrate these three smaller ones instead. The antiderivative of 6 over x is 6 natural log x. The antiderivative for x plus 1 in the denominator is natural log of x plus 1. Don't forget to use absolute values if the term can be negative. And then finally, um, the third integral, you might have to go to the side and use u substitution. You might be able to do it in your head too you get a negative 9 over x plus 1 plus the constant of integration. And a third type we'll look at is when you have quadratic factors. So far we've had distinct linear and repeated linear. We have not done a quadratic factor and that's okay. This is what learning is all about. Start by factoring your denominator as much as possible. We can factor out an x. That leaves x squared plus 1. A sum of squares can't be factored with real numbers. So this is why this one is a quadratic factor. We can still use each factor as the denominator for smaller fractions once we decompose. x will get its own fraction. x squared plus 1 gets its own fraction. Now, because this denominator is a quadratic or has a square, you have to build a linear numerator. A linear denominator gets a constant for a numerator. A quadratic denominator gets a linear numerator, which will have an x term and a constant term. Multiply both sides of this equation by x times x squared plus 1, and that will give you x squared plus 2x plus 3. The a fraction gets an x squared plus 1, and the bx plus c fraction gets an x. Now we'll choose values for x. Let's let x be 0. 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 3 is 3 a times 0 squared plus 1, that's a. b times 0 plus c, all that times 0 is 0. So a is 3, and that's the numerator of our a fraction. Now I'm going to let x be 1. 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 3, that's 6. a is 3, so I've got 3 times 1 squared plus 1, that's 2. b times 1 plus c, that's b plus c, times 1 is still b plus c. Solving, we've got 6 equals 6 plus b plus c. Subtract 6 from both sides, and that tells us 0 is equal to b plus c. Since b and c have to be solved, Let's pick another value of x. 
And again, I try to keep them simple. So negative one, if we sub that into this equation, negative one squared plus two times negative one plus three, that totals two. A catches three again, so three times negative one squared plus one, that's two. B times negative one plus C is negative B plus C times negative one. That gives us two equals six. Subtract six, you get negative four. Distributing the negative, you get B minus C. All right, so B plus C equals zero. Look over here in the red. B minus C is equal to negative four. If we add these, we get 2B equals negative 4, and so that tells us B is negative 2. Well, if B is negative 2, then negative 2 plus C has to still come out to 0, therefore C has to be 2. Now we have A, B, and C. Our original fraction from the top left can be written as a over x, so that's 3 over x, plus, be careful on this last fraction, bx plus c is going to be negative 2x plus 2, negative bx plus c, over that quadratic factor that couldn't be reduced. If we were asked to integrate that huge fraction in the beginning, we can now integrate these two. Specifically, the integral of 3 over x dx. Let's look at this. Remember, with a common denominator, you can break up a fraction into two or more as long as you've got the room for it and a common denominator. So the first term, negative 2x over x squared plus 1, I pulled this negative out, that's an integral, plus 2 over x squared plus 1 makes the other one. So this fraction, just using algebraic properties of common denominator, you can break this fraction into two separate ones, the one in blue, the one in red. I'm going to take that back off. But anyway, I wanted to explain why this one fraction became two separate fractions. It's just breaking it up using common denominator. The antiderivative of 3 over x is 3 natural log absolute value of x. The middle fraction x squared plus 1 has a derivative of 2x, so that's minus natural log of the denominator. Since x squared plus 1 is always positive, you can use parentheses instead of absolute value. And this one is from our inverse trig section that we did. That's 2 arctan of x plus c. I hope this video helps. These problems are not terrible, but the hard part is getting the original fraction broken into the smaller ones. Be sure to reach out by email or phone, stop by the office, or always ask in class, and we will get through these together, and I'll do my best to help you out.